Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, as um, as you saw in my last video, I am working on getting these injectors put back into this Alice Chalmers 7045. You probably saw it here. No, it's been about a at least a month ago now when I pulled the injectors out on this thing. And the guy who finally got all the parts in that kind of stuff, he said four of the injectors were bad. Well, very poor as far as atomizing on the end. And the other two were just, well, so-so. There's a little copper washer that drops down inside the hole here that the injector goes down some seats on. And then, of course, you got your two bolts that tie the injector in, into the head on the motor. And so they're kind of tapered. And so you, can, you put them in with kind of like the, the cone shape of the washer going down. That way they go down, kind of smash right out and seal up good. What I am going to do though is coat this part right here with uh, NICs. That way they can't stick in the head because they're actually a little sticky taking them out. But um, right now I'm just trying to get everything all lined up as far as to drop into that hole on top of the head. And eh, I doubt you can see down in there very well. I'm having a hard enough time look, seeing it myself. Got to drop that down in there, then take a look. Okay, I got to grab my little 90, 90 degree pick right here. And you probably can't see that on camera. But like I said before, the important thing is I can see. <laughs> Try and get that washer to do a, there we go, do a flip. Okay. Well, I'll see if I can put the, well, I don't know how we, if you can see down in there or not. Like I say, trying to look down that little teeny tiny. Okay, you might be able to see that down there. Get the light just sit, light sitting just right. Okay, that's got the washer in. Now, I want to get a little bit of anti-seize. And I see one of my batteries here have gone dead. I'm going dead. I'm going to have to grab the other battery. Okay. I just had to take my phone off my head and take a look at it. I saw a text message come through. And so let me see here right quick. Like I say, I just taken, put a little light coating over top of this. That way, it just helps prevent from wanting to stick. Like I say, I know when I took them out, they were just a little bit sticky. And I kind of work at them and kind of pry them to get them to pop out of the head. And one odd thing here on number six, the, that little copper washer that I just showed, putting it, dropping down, down into the head, sure enough, um, I can see on number six and up here on number one, in fact, I still got to get that one out. That's going to be kind of tricky. I got to work behind that dumb turbo. But um, uh, I could see that I had one down in there. Well, once I got picking and kind of getting them cut out, come to find out instead of just having one old one, there was three. Like they, they were double stacked one on top of the other, which is kind of odd. And now what I'm doing here is, since I don't really have any kind of a, 
gasket or anything like that to go right around the top to seal it up, which is kind of surprising. I would have thought they would have got me some. I'm just going to take some of this black silicone and drop right down or coat right around the top here. That way when it drops into the head, it's good to go. I'll say one thing, that stuff can kind of get everywhere. However, though, if you're going to be using silicone, especially around oil and that kind, of, that type of thing, you always, you always want to use the black. I use the black Permatex. Okay, there's that one. And um, because, for the most part, oil resistant. And it does a good job of sealing up with oil. Because you have the blue and you have the clear. But um, for basically everything, in fact, actually, I hardly ever even use those. I always just use the black on everything. Because it's made for oil, diesel fuel, that kind of stuff. Now, one thing I did learn on, um, it would have been my... Uh, on my Alice Chalmers WD, when I was working on getting the head put back on that thing here a couple years back, along with the exhaust manifold bolts, is to take and um, don't use on the, because a couple of the manifold bolts screwed into a water jacket in the head. In fact, I think, I know at least two, there might have been three, there might have been three or four that actually when they went in that they went into a water jacket and um, I tried using the black and I, they, they kept wanting to leak well I, I didn't realize that for antifreeze you there, there's a brown it's a real dark brown um, uh, silicone and that's made for the antifreeze for antifreeze resistant so okay I've got to grab a so uh, 716 socket and I'll be back with you here in a little bit all right, I just got injector number six. I had to run and grab my socket and a ratchet. I just got inject, like I said, I just got injector number six put in. And um, I went ahead and tightened him down. I'll go ahead and show you here on number five. Now, I am going to go across with my torque wrench and uh, double check everything. And I've already got the copper washer drop in here on number five. All right, that's got that one painted. Now we'll take and throw a little bit of Permatex onto it. If it works out today, I'm ho I'm hoping to go ahead and get this thing started. I've had it plugged in for quite a while, so it's, it, the the motor itself is nice and warm. That kind of a chilly day actually feels pretty good good on the fingers. That's actually real warm. <laughs> so okay, there's number five. Just want to make sure I got enough silicone. And uh, also, quick side note, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see my boom truck right there. And if I remember, I, I did a video on that as well, taking out that um, block piece for that, well, it'd be the jack foot on the left side, the left front corner, Take removing that block, that hydraulic block. Well, I finally got one lined up. Let me tell you something, for a little ch chunk of aluminum, it sure ain't cheap. But um, I'll be getting some video putting that thing back in, then I'll be able to be able to use my left front jack again. 
In fact, it should have been the neighbor that broke my, that broke the truck to begin with paying for it, not me. <laughs> well, I guess that's the way it goes. Like it's like I think I remember telling you the guy that my neighbor that I bought off of he loaned the truck to another neighbor. It was that other neighbor that broke the thing and then brought it back to him and didn't fix it. And so now I'm the one paying the bill and I didn't, I had nothing to do with it. But that's the way it goes, I reckon. Okay, I've got the two bolts in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get them bumped down. And as far as you and you well, as far as hooking up the injector lines, I'm gonna hold up on that. I wanna take and um Put a piece, uh, get some little shop towel and put over the ends of it. I actually want to take and crank the motor a little bit just to make sure I didn't get anything in to the end of it, any dirt or debris or anything like that that could plug up the injector. And also, when you're putting these injectors in, you want to take and alternate back and forth between left and right. That way, it keeps an even tension. All right, let's get that one. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to video putting in every injector. I mean, you see a few, you see them all. They're all the same thing. So once I get ready to start doing a few other odds and ends, I'll bring you back in. All right, guys, I just got injector number one put in. Had a little trouble with that one, trying to get that dumb copper the old copper washer cut out what i had to do is take a couple of these little chisels to go down in there and and literally take and, and cut that washer in pieces and then take an air gun and literally just blow down in there and kick everything back out and um you're probably wondering well how did you keep those little pieces from going right down in through the little small hole right into on top of the piston I took a little bolt, I dropped it down, down in there, and that went clear down in to the hole that the injector goes in. And um, of course that head's big enough, it can't fall clear into the end in and land up on top of the piston. And um, that worked good, it plugged it, plugged it shut, and I was able to, able to take and cut that washer off the top because the washer was above this bolt head. So it worked pretty good. Now, I am trying to get this return line fitted on. And I will say a little bit easier said than done. Trying to get all them fittings. And yeah, you're, that turbo is probably blocking the camera. But trying to get all these fittings dropped in there. Okay, I think they've basically all started except for one. Let's grab the light. Take a look. Yeah, that right there is still stuck up. I'm going to have to grab a wrench and throw on to it. Looks to be about like a half, I think. Nope. Nine sixteenths. I guess that uh, turbo is probably blocking your line of sight. Trying to get that little fitting to get threaded on the top. It does not want to go.
Okay, let's kind of get back down here. Out in the middle, go ahead, I'll go ahead and bump a few of these on down. Maybe that can help line things up. I will say pulling the injectors out on this thing is a whole lot easier than taking the whole entire head off like I did on the 17060 there last summer. Although it was neat to, neat to dig into that motor and check it all out. And it runs good. So, well, the 7060, I mean, I guess I'll find out about this thing. Okay, looks like some of these little fittings are not wanting to go. There's like a little rubber washer that can actually kind of have a tendency to kind of hold these up and not let them seat. Okay, that right there is bottoming out. This right here thing's already bottomed out, basically. That right there is almost bottomed out. Because as that, I was definitely hoping that it would be, well, still am. I get, I'll find out when I get it fired up hoping that it would be an injector problem as opposed to needing to take the head all off. This here is just a whole lot easier to do. bring you back in here once I get all these tightened up and like I say want to see a couple you've seen them all all right I just got these return lines here all done everything is all tightened down there on those little caps and I also got it's, there's like a no it's like a return line coming up off the top of the pump and so I got that put back together it's basically like a compression fitting right there on that one that's uh piston number one or injector number one it that's its its line then right there's the, the return line coming from the top of the pump and i just got the i put the ether can back in in fact i actually put a new one on it and now what i want to do is before I actually take and hook these lines up. I want to take some of these old shop towels here. Basically just take and fold it in two. And take half and half essentially. And stick over the end of the injector line. And what I want to do is take and crank the motor just so that it can any possible dirt or anything like that that might have gotten what I was working here that way it can take and basically purge the end of that of that injector line no, I thought I had it. Okay, I got enough rags here. That's why I keep some of these old junkers just laying around. Because they're going to get fuel all over them. And being old rags, nah, no big deal. And that, I don't have a whole lot of flex on that one, but 
and we'll get it wiggled down in there. Well, like I say, by taking and covering them up like that, it'll just keep fuel from wanting to spray everywhere. But yet, anything that might have gotten bumped or anything like that into the end of that line is hard to see from this angle. It'll help to take and purge it out. There we go. And yes, I know, I'm going to be putting the new valve cover gasket on it. I get it sitting right there up on top of the hood. However, the tricky thing is, I actually need to work on both sides of the tractor. And right now, it's hard to get on that side because my boom truck is stuck right here in front of it, going no clear back up against the tandem. And so, that's going to have to be a project once I can get that boom truck out of the way. Thing is, though, hell, we're, we're only in the uh, low 20s, maybe right at about uh, 21, 22 degrees out. And that boom truck is not a very good starter when it gets cold. And actually, kind of surprisingly, that boom truck, I have not been, been able to find a block heater on it which is really odd with it being a diesel truck. And especially with it being an old power company truck of that, you would have thought it would have been, it would have had a block heater, heater to take and plug in on it. But so far I've not been, been able to find one. But that valve cover gasket, it won't take that long to throw that thing on and be good to go again. But the main thing are the injectors. Okay, that's got that. All right, I finally wiggled around here on the other side of the tractor. With all my car hearts and that kind of stuff on, I can't squeeze through that little tiny hole right there. If I didn't have, have all my coats on, I, I could easy, easy enough. But I had to go clear around the tandem, down on the other side, and wiggle down underneath the back of it. Now we're over here on this side. And that's why I'm not putting that valve cover gasket in until I can get my boom truck out of the way. Okay, I've pulled the injector pump here out, and that's how you take and pull out to turn it on, push it in to shut it off. And so that's what I want to do. Like I say, I want to take and purge out those lines. I did take and hook up, um, I don't know how well you can see it down through there, th down there th through the window. I took and hooked up uh, the battery charger onto it just to bring up the batteries. And the, I was kind of surprised that the readout that it gave me when I put the charger on was uh, approximately right at about 50%. And so, of course, this tractor's not been started for a while either. Okay, let's just see here what happens. It should just simply turn over and that's all. Okay, well, that's what I wanted. So I'm going to take and work my way back. All right, I had to do a fuel line purge twice. You just saw me do it, that was the first time. And when I got back out here and did some looking, these old um, uh, shop towels that had, uh, had on the end of the lines, there was nothing on them. And so I jumped back in and did a second purge and that time it pumped fuel clear through and 
got fuel on the, the those old shop towels. So that's what I wanted. Okay, well, I'm not going to show you getting every line hooked up. Because they're all the same thing. Just get it started on those threads and, you're, and away you go. I've already got number one tied on. And so we'll just jump back here. If I can get number six to start turning. Trying to get it plugged in that hookup. A little easier said than done. Okay, I think that one started. Felt like it. Yeah. Okay, and that's basically got that one done get them all tight in there Alrighty, that's got that one tight. Go ahead and double check it. We're good to go there. And like I say, you see one, you've seen them all. Maybe I'll show you a little bit more here on number five. And then I'll bring you back in when I'm ready to actually start the tractor up. Well, hopefully, hopefully it'll start. <laughs> I guess I'll find out. Okay, it feels like that one. Let me grab my longer wrench. Those little stubby wrenches are nice for an, into a tight spot, but if you need a little longer reach, you gotta go back to the standard size. Okay. Come on, there we go. But like I say, pushing that fuel through, that um, that's just a simple way to purge out any dirt or anything like that that might have gotten into the end of the line as I was taking the injector out. And Oh, I should have some videos of it from last summer. If you got, yeah, you, you, you got, you, you'd have to go back to last summer, take a look. But um, when I worked on that um, uh, 7060 motor, I took the fuel lines clear off because I had pulled the head all off of it. Whereas this one here, I did not need to pull the head. Okay, that's got that one. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring you back in when we're getting ready to actually start the thing up and hopefully it'll be ready to roll. Yeah, the I see the alternator light, it went out also. <laughs> the batteries are built up high enough it's got the alternator light turned off. So, okay, well, let's see what happens. I think we're, cause see it, well, trying to get the throttle set about right because I, I put that new throttle cable in also. Okay, here it goes. Huh, that's odd. 
Okay, Ray, try a little squirt juice. Let's see what happens. Hey, there we go. Had to get the air through the out of the injectors, but we're running good. And unlike in time past, it's not pouring out gobs of smoke. But that guy told me that worked on them that uh, four of the injectors were poor and two were just so-so. Okay, there we kind of even out a little bit better. But yeah, so far we're running good. Let me jump out here and show you a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Well, you know what? I can tell a difference. Normally, even when it's plugged in, in and the engine's warmed up, it'll be sitting there smoking like crazy. But now, it's good and clear. No smoke. That's what you want. Well, I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to call that an end to this video. So take care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.